بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان معه جبل خبز ونهر ماء دجال والموف وثي ماونتن اوف سستننس فود ريزرفز فود اكسس and rivers streams will be under his control in today's climate the literal meaning in the hadith we could go by that where physically he will have control secondly is the systems behind control over these important resources as well so in today's times if we look at the different organizations and before coming of the jal before a plane lands the runway the tarmac needs to be prepared so before his arrival the prelude the signs of the qualities which he may be having possibly that plane that platform needs to be established So if we look at today we see all these signs are in front of us what Nabi Ali Salam has for, forecasted is vividly is clearly explicitly in front of us it's as bright as the day as brilliant as the sun nothing is vague the problem is us am i hazy am i blurred am i distracted so we need to make a decision and it's not only about me it's about me it's about generations no not only about your generations it is about the whole of humanity and shaitan's ultimate plan is to take everyone to hell fire kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lin nas we are the best of ummas taken out for the benefit of humanity So our job is to make sure every individual on earth no matter what color what creed what background what diversity they become the inmates of paradise the problem is us i am the problem al jannatu aqrabu ila ahadikum min shiraqin alihi jannah is closer to you than a a a a leather strap a shoelace it's closer to you than your shoelace وَالنَّارُ مِثْلُ ذَلِكَ And so is هَلْ فَيَا جَهَنَّمْ So deen is easy. الدين يُسْرُنْ The problem is where am I creating this barrier that I am not practicing on deen. I am not fulfilling my responsibility and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was like one person from the city went out and uh, he was in a place where he bought a premises a farm a ranch outside the city so he wanted to cut down some trees so he went to the hardware store and requested for a chainsaw but he wanted something advanced that would cut down many trees in one hour so he came to the store they showed him the different models he said no i want the best one that can do the fastest job so he he, he did the presentation and the person bought it Next day he came back to the shop and he complained. So the person says, "No, it it can't be. What what's your problem?" He said, "It took me the whole day and I just cut one tree." He said, "What's the problem?" So uh, he asked him, "Is a chainsaw there?" He said, "Yes." He brought it. He started it up. So the city dweller heard the noise of the chainsaw and said, "What's that noise? What's that noise?" So he manually cut the tree without starting up the chainsaw. So we don't know how to, we don't follow instructions, we don't follow rules. We complicate our life, but not only in this world, but in the year after as well. So there is the grave, there is judgment day, there is a crossing of the pul sirat, there is accountability. Now if you want to pass all of these stages easily, we need to follow the instructions of Allah and his rasul and shaitan and nafs are there to destroy us the mashaykh used to say khalaqallahu almalaika allah had given the malaika 
intelligence bila shahwa without any desire wa khalaqa al baha'im shahwa bila uqul they've got desire but no intelligence wa khalaqa ibn adam wa rakiba fihi al aql wa shahwa but this insan this human being allah had given him intelligence and desires faman ghalaba that person whose intelligence overpowers his shahwa his desires he will become like the malaika wa man ghalabat shahwatuhu aqlahu iltaqaha bil baha'im and whoever's desires shahwa overpowers his intellect he will degenerate to the stage of animalism barbarism so we can become angelic or barbaric the choice is us it depends how we control this nafs sufyan thori used to say ma alajtu shay'an ashad alayya min nafsi i have not treated <coughs> anything more difficult on me than my nafs i've never challenged anything i've not known have a greater challenge than the nafs maratan li wa maratan alayya sometimes i win sometimes it wins it's a challenge so when you got an opponent somebody is a world heavyweight champion but he's got such a opponent that he knows he may win he may lose the odds are even so the nafs is such that it is there to take us down so all these alamat and signs are in front of us nabi ali salam this is a bounty and a na'ma it is spelled clearly in the no, long narration of hazrat nawas ibn sam'an radiyallahu anhu sahabi al jalil mentions about dajjal where nabi ali salam once mentioned to sahaba about dajjal fa khaffad fihi wa raffa'a hatta zanannahu fi ta'ifa nabi ali salam made mention of dajjal and he described him sometimes to be insignificant sometimes his turmoil was so significant we felt that he was in the cluster of the date palm trees so we went to nabi alayhi salam and he seen this faqala ma sha'nukum he seen that we were in a very great state of fear so he asked us what's wrong so i said qulna ya rasul allah ذكرت الدجال الدجال you mentioned about the dajjal you mentioned about him describing him etc and we thought so this is our impression فقال غير الدجال اخوفني عليكم i i i have more fear in regard to you in so many other matters then besides the dajjal اي يخرج وانا فيكم if he does come out if he does come forth he does make his appearance fa ana haji juhudunakum then i shall sort him out i will contend with him on your behalf wa yakhruj wa lastu fikum and if he does emerge and i'm not amongst you then a person should contend on his own behalf and allah would take والله خليفتي على كل مسلم الله جل جلاله take care of every muslim on my behalf and safeguard him against this evil of dajjal this is a very con- important consolation for the ummah that on behalf of nabi alayhi salam every muslim every mu'min who is sincere and has prepared accordingly and has followed the commands of Allah and the advices of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allah would take responsibility then Nabi alayhi salam described Dajjal and advised of reading surah Kahf and he would appear between Syria and Iraq fahath fa'atha yaminan wa'atha shimalan and he would spread mischief in every direction ya ibad allah fathbutu o servants of allah adya to haq adya to the truth ulna ya rasul allah wa ma labthuhu fil ardin sahaba asked some questions how long will he be 
the narration of what it is etc then uh, Sahaba asked on, on how would he travel on the earth Kal ghayth istadbarat hurri He will travel like the clouds driven by wind So in today's times one is the wind literally will carry him possibility through the, the super jets, private jets, the concords of this world he will travel so Nabi alayhi salam said like clouds clouds so if you look at the, the, the planes and how uh, the altitude they, they, they go above the clouds and they are driven by wind, the engine, the motor, the propulsion. So uh, that's how his form of travel. Then he would come to invite people to the wrong, to Batil. And uh, many people فَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ وَيَسْتَجِيبُونَ لَهُ Many people will believe him, they will affirm, they will accept and they will follow him 100%. They will become supporters and his power would be such فَيَأْمُرُ السَّمَا فَتُمْطِرْ وَالْأَرْضِ فَتُمْبِتْ This is a very important point in the topic that we are mentioning now with regards to Dajjal. So one is literally, he would give the command to the sky and the rain would fall and the earth and crops would grow and more than that more than that فَتَرُوحُ عَلَيْهِمْ سَارِحَتُهُمْ أَتْوَلَ مَا كَانَتْ So Ajib, in the evening the pasturing animals would come to them and their humps would be elevated, would be high the others would be full of milk and the flanks would be stretched. So the, the topic, the current points that we are mentioning, let us try to see the prelude and the different efforts that are being made currently where Dajjal will be controlling the global food and water supply. And uh, part of the narration وَيَمُرُّ بِالْخَرِبَةِ فَيَقُولُ لَهَا He will walk through wasteland and say to it that أَخْرِجِي uh, كُنُوزَكِ Bring forth your treasure and the treasures would come out before him like the swarm of bees like the swarm of bees the treasures would come out so inshallah if Allah gives us tawfiq we'll discuss each point but for now the different efforts that are made globally so if you look at uh, the World Trade Organization's AOA agreement on agriculture so this has been engineered to make to, 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 to make the global dependency and to secure global food supply so uh, in a book if we get time we can study it Naftania International has written a book called Sowing Hunger Reaping Profits a Food Crisis by Design so that discusses how international trade laws and trade liberalization has benefited these large agribusinesses and uh, they implement in the green revolution then you've got the US lobby trade negotiations and uh, even if you look at the people behind it Kaggle uh, Investor Service the CEO Dan Amsters who was uh, executive of Goldman Sachs so uh, they created this agri-business with new rules to control the global trade, commodities, agriculture, etc. And uh, the idea is the farmers are now, on whatever scale they're doing, they have some impact on the global market prices, etc. And thus, they want to remove the protection of farmers and uh, 
in their countries they are they've already monopolized it so between the us eu etc and um, what what is the removal of these protection these subsidies this support for the small farmers the whole system crashes and uh, the farmers now cannot sustain it so one secondly they put them on their feet and you rely on these big companies to come in and bail them out likewise the consumers will pay bigger prices and these conglomerates now will maximize on their the, the profits so it's like dismantling the the food sovereignty of humanity so let's look at the india recently where there was legislation of uh, 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 liberalizing and legitimizing the agendas and and benefiting agri business interests so it was to trap india into food insecurity why and how to eradicate the food buffer stocks so this is important for national food security but if we see what happened recently where there was massive uh, farmer protests and you will see a domino effect in different countries of the world where they applied certain rules to wipe out the farmers if they are saying there is a food shortage why are you embarking on this avenue so uh, on another investigation in a report investment firms banks hedge funds they are speculating on uh, the commodity market and they prof- they they profiteering because on speculation they pull in the strings prices go up so so much control has taken over this industry that the commodity future prices is not connected to actual supply and demand in the market but it's all on speculation so uh, if we look at uh, the in uh, different investment funds blackrock vanguard etc they 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 making financial killings and even though basic things of wheat etc has doubled has tripled has quadrupled in different countries so we should have been urging farmers to produce more get better yields but what they doing is they pushing the chemical agendas genetic engineering techniques and uh, seeds controlling the seed market so this is putting the farmers in debt when they are in debt they become dependent when they are dependent they are trapped and then they sign the long 100 page contract and they sign over their farms so uh, in reality we are facing a hunger a, a rise in food crisis and uh, it's 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 instituted by this agri business so pushing out new technologies saying there is a problem and justifying it and justifying the roll out and not going back to where the actual problem is so they created a problem it's a front a screen a smoke screen then they come in with solutions they prepare pre- preparing the data they preparing the report official reports and saying that uh, there is short supply lines uh, economic uh, democracy policies are all engineered by them if we look at uh, in uk as well so the rail union leader recently called for the working class to have solidarity and fight back against these uh, new world order gurus the 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 the, the billionaires um and that's why we seen in different countries of the world people are really in people are going to the streets so this whole thing of 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 this possession and dependency on food supply now at the moment we discussing just food supply the dajali system and uh, whoever resists this order they been taken out in 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 different forms and uh, inshallah we'll get on that point at another time but we see uh, on on the corporate level the whole global agri food chain 
uh, is been accelerated. So the high tech companies, the big data companies, the conglomerates from Amazon to Microsoft to Facebook and Google have joined these agribusiness giants. Who are these giants? Koteva, Bayer, Kagel, Sangenta, all these uh, uh, agricultural holdings. And to add to that, and, and it's very important and we'll mention it now, the Bell and Melinda Gates Foundation. So they've been buying uh, a lot of farmland and they've been promoting the Green Revolution for Africa and pushing the agenda for biosynthetic food, genetic engineering technologies. And uh, they are part of this mega uh, mega agri-food corporations to, to push their agenda. So, and, 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 and how do they come in? They say, you know what, we are to save humanity. We are humanitarian. We are here to save the planet. We, we, we need uh, systems which is climate friendly. See what's helping. We want to help the farmers. We want to feed the world. But this is just a, 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 a repackaging. It, it's, 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 it's greenwashing. And uh, behind it is just a imperialistic, uh, Dajjali, satanic, global agenda. So we, we have to be very careful, vigilant, and uh, we can see how they're starting to take control over the different uh, institutes and farmers are struggling. Are they on their knees? And as time goes, Allah protect one and all. They are starting to take control. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect one and all. The amal for today is to read Salat with Jama'ah. Especially, be particular about Isha and Fajr Salah. Man salla al-Isha fi jama'atin kana qiyami nisfi laylatin. You read Salah with Jamaat Isha, half the night Ibadah. وَمَنْ صَلَّ الْعِشَى وَالْفَجْرِ فِي جَمَعَةٍ كَانَ كَقْيَامِ لَيْلَةٍ It's like the person who made Ibadah the entire night. وَآخِرُ دَوَانَانِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ